Hello and welcome to another two-part tutorial video series from Cebus Visual Technology. In this video, we will try to recreate the effect we just saw. In addition to containing a final fluid effect inside an object, we will also explore the possibilities to have external particle effects following our final fluid simulation. We are going to do that by exporting a velocity grid and using that to work with the particles. But for the first part, let's just create our final fluid effect. The first thing we do is we are creating a grid domain. In this grid domain, all our fluid effects happen. I like to have some even numbers, so I'll just set the domain to 100 and also make sure we are not overdoing the resolution right now for this video and I'll give the memory limit a little bit higher. Also, what we saw previously was a zero gravity effect, so I'll turn down the gravity and I want some uh, animations to slow down to simulate a kind of a bigger volumetric effect here, so I'll turn on the big effect node. All the other parameters we can leave uh, as is. However, we know right now that the vorticity is probably way too high for the scale, so we might need to adjust that. But we are going to do that later. Let me do another emitter here, and also we need a fluid collider. And I don't like how we have the setup right now. I want to see our domain all the time. So I'll turn on show VP and show VGrid. So that will give us the real domain. So the outer blue thing is our real domain. The inner one is our 100, 100, 100 box. Now that we've turned on our domain visualization, the bounding boxes, we can move around our grid domain and see in real time how this will affect the placement of voxels. Keep in mind this jumping or, or weird placements of voxels is caused by the real time approach of our solver. So there are some restrictions where voxels can be placed. So let me now move the emitter to the center of our domain. I'll just align it in all axes and we have our emitter now in the center of the domain. That gives us the most space to expand in all directions. Keep in mind we are doing a zero gravity effect here. So that's why I want to have it in the center of the domain. Now the last thing we need to do is pick our emitter for the simulation grid and also the collider. So now we have everything in there and we can start uh, doing or setting up our effect here. One more thing we might want to do is right now is create our container and I'll use just a standard sphere for our container and let me just uh, adjust it a little bit so that we are not too big. Yep, that sounds looks good and we are also centering it on our emitter or domain, doesn't matter. So we align it in all axes and here we have our container. And if we wanted to render this container as a glass ball or uh, something out of glass so that we can look inside, we are going to need a shell with a little bit of a wall thickness. So I'll just add it a little bit of a wall thickness. And that's also a good idea for uh, colliders to have a wall thickness so that the voxels for collision detection are working much better with a wall thickness or with a real volume, so to say. Okay, we have done that, that squared away. Now we go to our fluid collider and we pick our sphere as the colliding object or collider object. And we need to make sure we are using an SDF that will turn the sphere into a voxel representation for our collider. For now, I think we can leave everything there. We might need to adjust the bandwidth and the resolution, but we're doing that later. So I think we are now set and done. We have everything in here. We have the two uh, objects here for our simulation. So we could just go ahead and just press the preview button. And the first thing we see, as I mentioned, is that our vorticity is way too high for the scale. 
So I'll just dial it down to two and reduce it for the velocity mask. So now we get this nice big cloud movement and gaseous look. And that's what I'm after. So I think that's nailed it. So just two little adjustments and it's great that everything is here in real time. So we wanted to have a zero gravity effect. So I'll turn off any velocities and now we have this zero gravity effect. Right now, not much is going on. It's just staying in place, but that's exactly what we want. Let me dial in a little bit more uh, smoke. And also we want to have a lot of fuel in there. And that will give us a little bit more expansion because now we have a lot of um, fuel and heat in the volume. So, that's kind of cool. And the next thing we might want to adjust is a little bit our ranges so that we get a little bit more material. And now we have the nice expansion there. A lot of fuel generated within the volume and the expansion is now a little bit bigger. So I think we have a lot of settings already done. I'm pretty happy with that. Maybe we add some angular wire rotation to the effect. So in the next round or circles, it will update. And here we go. That gives a nice, interesting look. So all we did is we did this angular rotation and I'll make sure it's strong enough. And we need to fine tune a little bit more. However, because this is all in real time, we can see exactly what we are doing and how we should work with that. So right now we see our collider is kind of working already. So the smoke or fire effect is colliding with our sphere. So the gas or fire effect is filling our sphere. So let's now work on the advection part where we control the cooling, for example, or the burn per temperature and so on. The first thing I know I want is reduce the cooling. And right now it didn't change a lot, but we are going to have a lot more material burnt. When it's burning, it's eating up more fuel right now. And that will naturally increase the cooling rate. So now we are getting there. That looks good. And I want to have more fuel burned in one go. And for a burn to happen, we have now more fuel. And that looks already really nice and cool. However, we see it's kind of a disk, which makes sense because we have no gravity or any other force um, pushing our gas uh, simulation around. So what we might want to adjust is also we don't want any fading and damping uh, on the uh, velocity. However, our smoke should fade much faster to the outside. And now we have much more uh, fading of our smoke. And let's just turn the damping down. And we get this really nice interaction now going. So all the other settings, we just keep at the default values. I, I think I'm, I'm happy right now with the uh, look of it. However, we still have this issue with uh, being a disc like effect. And I want to fill the real volume of it. So what we need is an extra force that will push our flames in all directions. So to make sure this happens, I'm creating an extra force. We need this extra force. So let's do, there's uh, several options or possibilities to add this extra force to push the gas around. The easiest one is a wind force, a standard wind force. So we are using a standard 3D Studio Max wind force and we are using a spherical one and same deal. We'll make sure it's in the center of our uh, emitter or domain. 
Okay, so we place it in the center and the last thing we need to make sure is that our fluid grid is actually using this force field in the simulation, so we need to pick it. So now we have the emitter, the collider and the wind force field. So the next thing we might want to adjust is a little bit of the settings. Uh, I'll start with the strength. So we see that strength is way too much. So we need to be aware of our scale of the scene, how much force we use. So let me just reduce the force. And I'll see it's still too big. My core, I don't like it. The core is still way too big. So I'm going to make the emitter a little bit smaller. So I'll just reduce the radius up here. And let's do it half. Yep, that gives us more time to travel from the core to the outside. So that looks good. And now let's work. Let's go back to the wind force and work on that. Just to make sure we have a nice effect here we are after. So let me just pick the wind force and add some turbulence. The, the good thing about the wind force turbulence is it affects everywhere in the domain. Oh, and we already get a nice effect. Let me just scaling and nice. That's what I'm after. These nice whirly smokes like stuff, lifelike uh, behavior. That's what I'm after. So we could also restrict this wind force with standard max features. So we can uh, set the decay there. And with the uh, range indicators, we see how far our wind reaches. And we could make it even tighter. And then it only affects the inner areas and the rest uh, outside is not affected. But for now, I'm fine with affecting everything of our grid domain. So everywhere our smoke and fire effect is affected by the wind force. So that looks pretty good. Um, however, we already see there's some smoke and fire going through our collider, which is really annoying and we don't want to have that. So we can check this even with the debug mode. We see a flickering outside of our collider. That's usually an indication voxels are created. So there is some uh, stuff going outside. And when we turn on our collider, we can see flames are going through our collider. So we need to find a solution to get this watertight so nothing leaks out of the container, so to say. So we can try now several things to make sure um, we fix that. But before we do that, let me adjust maybe the expansion rate so that we don't have too much force pushing out the fire and smoke effect. But that didn't help a lot. And uh, we, we just want this expansion to happen. So we can't go lower, I think. We can try to adjust some other values to maybe get the collider working much better. One thing is the subsampling. So I'll just put two subsamples to make sure uh, it helps the collider working better. But as we can see, it's just slowing down our simulation, but not helping with the collision detection. So we need to adjust our fluid collider to get this thing watertight. As you might recall, our collider is the sphere with a very thin wall thickness. So we might have to do a little bit of adjustment in the fluid collider. And there are several options and controls we have in our fluid collider. Uh, one important control is, as always, uh, the SDF resolution, our volume grid resolution for the collision. And we also have another very important uh, control, and that's our uh, ranges or activation distance. Um, before we adjust the uh, resolution, I think we'll start playing around with the uh, min activation distance and the maximum activation distance. Because we don't want to have the effect starting right at the surface of our collider object. So we need to give it a little bit of a buffer. So we want to make sure it starts way earlier. 
And already we see a huge impact of this little adjustment. So it's close to watertight. We only have on the left side a little bit of artifacts going on, but compared to before, this is a huge improvement. And we just did one little adjustment with our maximum active distance. Besides adjusting the ranges, we can also now add some slip thickness and slip factor. Slip thickness is another range or buffer towards the collision surface and that will decide when to add some extra turbulence based on contact with the surface. So when gas hits the surface of our collider we can add a slip factor that's an additional force that pushes the smoke and fire away from the surface in all directions. And this is usually needed when you have colliders. And if you overdo the effect, as you can see here, it creates a really high amount of force and it goes through the collider. So we need to find the sweet spot where we think it looks cool and it's still enclosed in our container. So I'll just dial it in a little bit. And thanks to the real time view, we can see our adjustments in real time and how it looks like. So just a little bit more. And I think that looks cool now. And again, if we overdo it, we are approaching a, a situation where we just blow through the collider. So we'll need to get there. But now I see the smoke is pushed around from the contact of the surface and our sphere is fully filled and we still have everything nice contained. There's still one little artifact and blip on the left side and we'll deal with that in uh, adjusting maybe our resolution to just make sure we get this much cleaner and, and more closed up. So there's a lot of things we can adjust in our collider to make sure everything is according to scale and working with the forces we use. When we reduce the resolution, it gets worse. We get bigger voxels, so sometimes that helps. But increasing the resolution is usually the better bet to get our collider watertight. And this wraps up our first part of the tutorial video. Make sure you check out the part two of this video as well. In part two, we will use the simulation we created here and export VDB files, including a velocity grid. And we will use this velocity grid to drive particles in the exact same way our gas is moving and behaving. So make sure you check out part two as well and don't miss that one. Goodbye and thank you for watching this video.